Get ready to get kicked in the nads! TNT on the Show presents Nerdy After Dark with your host, Pablo Gunner and Slay J. And we are here to uh, talk nerdy with you about perverted stuff. Since it's after dark, but not really. So uh, get the X rated filter out. Yes, yeah. Um, get your driving sock out. Um, there you go. So, <laughs> I don't know what I was meaning by filter. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's essentially we're going to talk about like a lot of the same stuff as uh, as talking nerdy, but you know, we're going to talk about music and stuff like that. You know, m- music, movies, shows, whatever we've been up to. Food of you know, if we have any food places that we want to get into, and then. Um, what else? Just any nerdy news and stuff that's been going on, and stuff like that. So I definitely wanted to, I definitely wanted to talk about that uh, that Captain Marvel trailer, huh? Oh yeah, dude, that looks sick. I just I was underwhelmed. I was just like, oh you're okay. I I, I cool. personally was like, I don't really like I I feel like most of the Marvel movie trailers they they know what they're going for and that's and they hit their mark. And this one was, I was just like, I don't know what they're going for. I I am lost and confused about this. Because it's just like, you have Carol Danvers, and it's Nick Fury, and he's like, oh yeah, I've seen a rogue agent before and stuff. And you're like, what? And like, she, it looks like she's messing up. Like she's a like she's been been brainwashed, so she doesn't remember her human self, and so she thinks she's Kree now. And I'm like, I don't, I can't, I can only, I don't even, I can't even tell you if that's what happened in the comics. I just know what's been going in the comics, and I don't know that as being a thing, you know. Right. So my opinion is, uh, well, Brie Larson, she's hot. So <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think that's where I'm judging most of this trailer on. It's just my other mind is thinking, I guess. But, uh... I I was just so intrigued by it because... Um... It's something that they haven't done before. Where it's finally... We're finally getting into that whole Kree type thing. And... uh, It's... It's it's about time we start going towards a new direction, I guess. You get what I mean by the... The Marvel direction. So it's been Thanos and the Infinity War this whole ten years, so this is kinda like helping us reach farther past that. Yeah, this does seem it does seem different. Yeah, it does seem new and it does seem different. Yeah, for the scrolls for sure, seeing them was pretty cool and and seeing all the other stuff. I I think they're gonna do it justice. I'm just I'm not I'm not connecting the dots right now with this trailer. You know, like to go, well, how does she go from being brainwashed to being our greatest hero, you know, true, our strongest and stuff. So yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm I'm not like, uh, look stupid. I'm just like I'm just confused, you know. I'm just a little lost. It is the first one. It was it was a teaser, and it's supposed to tease, you know. So I think that's what it did. A lot of people are really excited for it. I'm still a little weary. Uh, I'm you know I'm 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 waiting more for like a fool. A full-blown AIDS trailer, you know. So don't just well, gi- don't just give me they, HIV. I want full-blown AIDS. They're just trying to gingerly touch the tip. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So we'll get there. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. That's. I think that was the biggest thing, really. Right. Yeah, that was the biggest thing that's out recently, right? I, I do want to talk What's about that? something else. I do want to talk about something else, which is that Henry Cavill, people are saying that he's leaving the, the DCEU. And I think that, well, for one, that's pissing me off. And not just because he's leaving, because that's not even what's happening. It's all it is is misinformation. So what's going on is Henry Cavill can't do a cameo in the Shazam movie. And so WB or whoever, they're upset with him that he can't do it. But he can't do it because he's already scheduled for other movies. But it's just a cameo. And so people think he's leaving. And it's like, 
He's not leaving. No one said he's not going to be in Justice League 2 and whatever. But, I mean, they've already said, like, hey, there's no cameos in Aquaman. Why is it a big deal if there's no cameos of, for, of Superman in Shazam? Why does there need to be? I, I have no clue what would be the point. I don't see the point. They're almost the same character. They really are. Aren't they? It's just Shazam was kind of like a kid version of Superman. Right. It would make more sense if, yeah, exactly. And it's magic, his weakness. So, like, <laughs> right. that's it. Like, that's all it is. And I'm like, you, you, that would be... It. You only need it when it's Justice League 2, Electric Boogaloo, when Darkseid shows up and you need all the heroes, you know? Yeah, totally. Unless they're going to send Caliban as the second movie and then the third movie is going to be, you know, the third Justice League movie is going to be Darkseid. But still, like... I do you think they're going to rip off the Nick Fury thing that he's putting together the Avengers? They're going to do that for this for the Dark Side one. Oh <laughs> uh, well, they already have the just they already did the Justice League movie, so they they started with you know they kind of no, started no, I was, I was started messed up. They're going to have to recruit like what you said for Dark Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will. I think they will. Yeah, I think it'll be that that same type of thing. You know, like in the Avengers, we're like, hey, we need everyone. You know. So, but it just, I, I'm just upset that people are like, oh, he's left the DCU, he's leaving the DCU. No, he isn't, okay? He's not leaving the DCU. Read it. Read the stuff. Instead of just reading headlines, instead of just reading clickbait, read the damn thing. And it says he still has a contract with WB. He didn't say he's quitting Superman. He's just not going to do a cameo for Shazam, and that's not a big deal. And you know what? Yeah, there there are rumors though that that WB is pissed off at him for that. But it's like you know, if you guys would schedule this stuff better, you that then he wouldn't have a choice. You know? Yeah. But they really don't know what they're doing. You know? In fact, I posted a thing today on our Instagram, which you can go check at TNTM the show on Instagram, and it said if you were the DC Films president, and and this is what sparked this is someone said someone, you know, if you're the DC Films president, who would you, uh, what would you do? You know, what would you do? And this the first person said call Henry Cavill, and it's like why, why you don't need to call Henry Cavill because he's not quitting. He's not quitting, he's just not doing this, okay? And then that's their fault, because they don't plan things and they don't set things up well. But you know what? You know what if I would do if I was the president? I would make I, I would make it whoever's in charge of the DC animated films, that's who I would make in charge of my movies. Because those movies are freaking knocking it out of the park, and they're sticking to, like, the new 52 comics, but mashing, like, the old 52 comics, and they're making it something new, and they're making something different and fresh, so it's not, they're not sticking exactly to it, and that's fine. Nothing's wrong with that. Right. But, you know, like, and that's, and that, see, that's the thing is, my problem is not like, oh, that you're playing with liberties with stuff. No, it's just, you're doing a shitty job, you know? That's, I'm just, I'm just annoyed. In fact, this guy asked me about it at work. He's like, oh, did you hear about Henry Cavill? What do you think about Henry Cavill? And I'm like, he's not leaving, for one. He's just not going to be in the Shazam movie. It's it's so yeah. ridiculous. And the thing is, is people... That's, this is why I hate rumors. I hate rumors because rumors are just garbage. And they're just such a waste of time and energy. Because somebody made a rumor that he quit based off of this information. And someone made a rumor that WB fired him because of this information. That is completely and entirely incorrect. Okay? And so that's what pisses me off. Is the th- and, and the thing is, all these... Same thing with Batman. They've been saying like, oh yeah, Ben Affleck's quitting. You know, I don't know how many times they've said he's quit and he's done and all this stuff. You know what? They haven't quit. And, and if they were to reply to every single rumor of them quitting or leaving... These guys would never get any work done. And still they do reply. They still do reply. You know, when there's an interview, like even Henry Cavill, he put up, he did this Instagram post of him with a Superman figurine with some music in the background and he raised it and then he lowered it. And people, that that just confused people. And, but what it meant is that he's not done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. That's what it meant. And then same thing, like even Ben Affleck, he said in interviews, like, 
no, I'm not quitting. You know, I'm just not doing this. He's like, I'm not doing the script anymore. I'm not directing anymore. You know, and people want to be like, oh, doesn't that piss you off? Doesn't that make you want to quit? You know, and they just, they hang off every little word and every little expression that they, they say or use. And then they use it against them to just spur more rumors just to get more information. And it's just annoying. It's like, just let people be, let people live. When we get the movies is when we get the movies. And that's it. Enough of this crap, you know? Jeez. It's, it's just annoying. It pisses me off. And that was Nerd Rage with your host, Pablo Gunner. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, man, uh, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go lately. Have you been uh, keeping up or not? I have not been keeping up. I just, you know, for me, Pokemon Go is a fitness app to me. You know, I really only use it when I'm running a lot. And um, ever since, like, I just, I haven't been doing too much running just because uh, I hurt my neck a few weeks ago um, because I ran without, without, uh, I ran without stretching and stuff like that, without stretching before and stretching after because I was like, I'm only going to do a mile. But I did it top speed, so it was really intense. And so that's what, intensity is worse than, you know, than uh, longevity. You know, I mean, of course, longevity is ba- is bad if you go too far as well, you know, um, when it comes to that stuff. But just putting strain, you know, I've had neck issues, so so that, it just messed my neck up. And ever since then, I haven't been, I haven't been running. But I, like I said, I use it when... Pretty much that's what I use it for. And yeah, there's I, I I was using it more because of the of the the friend request, the friend app, you know, they that they added that. Right, yeah, and uh, you still haven't given me your code. Oh, did you send me one? I sent you mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, I need to get I on then. You, well that was like a long time ago when you were in Vegas. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So you texted it to me. I did, yeah. Okay. It's weird that, like, you can't just send it to people through the app. That's kind of odd. Yeah, you have to have that code. Yeah, so... um, But still, it's not like... That's why when it first happened, everyone was sharing their codes on on Facebook and stuff. So, um, yeah. So I got a shiny Wobbly. So... You, have you heard of the shiny stuff? I ha- I've heard of them, and I've never, never gotten them. Yeah, this was my first ever. I was like, I was psyched. <laughs> and I guess it's like one of the most, like, uh, rare uh, shinies you can get. Wow. And I didn't even, I didn't realize it until someone was like, hey, you have a shiny this. And I'm like, that sounds sexual. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, I've been playing I spit a lot of that. It been rub it out, walk, so. It's making me walk more. That's good, man. That's great. Yeah, I need to start losing some weight again. Maybe I should start following your nerdy fitness blog on tntmtheshow.com. Yeah, sure, man. You know, that's it's. I know it can be really hard and it can be really daunting. Um, you know, when you're out of shape and you're trying to get in shape. You know, especially because you're like, oh man, this 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 workout's like too intense. I don't, I'm not ready for that. You know, and so everything is a lot. It's just at your own speed, man. Like whether it's a certain workout, like even for the for my workouts that I've created for the actual nerdy fitness workouts, like they're just hey, you just do them at your own speed. You know, like I try to do them with my dad, and that old gooder tries to keep up with me, and I'm like, do them at your own speed. <laughs> you know, and then he gets through like half the workout and he's like, F you, F this, this is bullshit, you know, and he walks out and I'm like, I told you not to be so intense, like, it's not my fault, you're trying to keep up with me, you know, I'm like yeah. half your age, you know, and you're trying to keep up with me, and it's like, and it's not really a big deal that he can't keep up with me because he's half his age, because then there's another guy who is you know, a few years younger than him, and I can barely keep up with him because he's always running long distance all the time. So it's not even about that. It's just about staying consistent and in shape, you know. And there's many different ways, too. That's the thing is, like, there's so many different things you can do, and it's easy to get bored, and it's and it's uh, it's hard to, you know, uh, find, find things because, like I said, hey, I hurt my neck. And so I'm like, well, what can I do besides running, that's not going to impact my neck. And I'm like, 
well, I could do the bike, you know, I'll do the bike and see if that hurts my neck at all, you know, and so I'll just, I'll do the bike for 30 minutes, you know, and so that's all it takes, like 30 minutes, you just good 30 minutes of cardio, you know, then there's the elliptical, you know, and there's different ones too, there's like the skiing one where you can use the handles, and then there's just oh, ones yeah. where like, where it's like really, really fast, but those ones, it's better if you just turn up the resistance, uh, it's harder if you don't use your, your hands, but that's when you like use your shoulders more and stuff for it, you know. Um, and then swimming, I've just, I've, you know, I, I love swimming, so uh, it's really great and really easy. It's just crazy though, because I discovered that like thirty-five laps in like a in like a regular sized pool, um, it takes thirty-five laps to do a mile, and that takes about thirty to thirty-five minutes. And I'm like, wow, it takes me 30 to 35 minutes to swim a mile, but I can do a mile in like under eight minutes, you know, running. So it's just kind of crazy because it's like, well, I'm using both on my arms and my legs. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy to think about. But um, uh, So have you checked out the uh, Iron Fist season two yet? I have not. I have not. I've really been wanting to. I just haven't had the chance just because when we talked about this a little bit the other day is... Um, being involved with the podcast and doing work for the podcast and just doing things in general are dictated by what post I work, you know? Right. And so, and so it's just like that. If I'm partnered with somebody and they're not in the same nerdy stuff as me and they're not on the same like episode or on the same season, then I just can't, then I just don't watch it. We watch something else like a Western, a lot of guys like Westerns, which is really cool because there's a lot of great Westerns out there. Um, and just other shows, you know, in movies and stuff. Well, it's hard to get into shows with those guys, but, um, but yeah, so I have it because I have not been, I haven't been able to be by myself with a computer at work. And that's really the only time, uh, I, I watch TV cause I go like, well, I can watch TV at work, so I'm not going to do it at home. I'll, I'll play video games at home cause I can't do that at work, you know? So have you? Oh yeah, totally. I did. Uh, I binged it in a couple days, and uh, you know what? I was kind of underwhelmed, to be honest. Uh, wow. It was uh, very slow at the beginning, and then you get to a point, and you're like, "Wait, this is it? This is this is over?" You know. So I don't want to like ruin this for you, uh, Paul. But I, I would I would still just uh, give it a chance because you know I still liked other parts of it, and. Uh, it, it seems like they're going to start doing something else with Danny Rand. So it's, yeah, it's, it's good at least to check out. Have you seen the, you've seen the, whatchamacallit though, um, Power Man, Luke Cage? Luke Cage. Season two? I'm working on season two right now with him. I saw the first season like last year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, from what I've heard is you should have watched season two of Luke Cage and then this, and that's the way they've been putting them out. Um, oh, <laughs> maybe that's why I'm a little confused. Yes, <laughs> probably. That probably is. Uh, so watch that and then get back to me or us um, about that. But no, I, I'm not. I'm not scared by that at all. Uh, I talked to a guy at work, and he he's the one that told me it was out because I didn't even know it was out. And then he was like, "Yeah, I liked it a lot." He's like, "I think it's better than the first one." He's like, "I think it's better than a lot of the the." Um, he's like, "I think it." I don't know if he said it was the best one. I don't think he said it was the best season two, but because I think Luke Cage has the best season two so far. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, I've, I've been liking that so far. But if you don't like black people, it's not going to be. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, but like I said, I love it. And so, uh, so here's the thing. I heard that they use the same uh, fart, fight, fight, fight. Not fart co- choreographer um, <laughs> f- from Black Panther th- um, for Iron Fist, okay, s- season two. So, and I just recently rewatched Black Panther again, and I gotta say, it I th- it, it was even better the second time because. I, you know, like, there's all the glam, kind of like, you know, when you, when you just experience something for the first time, and then you can, like, strip away some of, some of the stuff, and then you just see it, like, for what it is, sort of, you know. You're kind of awestruck the first time you see something. And so, 
Uh, and that was the other thing is the choreography was really, really well done. That's what I noticed this time around is the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this is really erratic and too fast paced. And then this time I was like, no, it actually really works really well because the only time it's fast paced is when he has Panther powers and he's like messing people up. And that's kind of like when Captain America with Super Soldier in the first Avenger, where he's just taking dudes out like crazy unless they're on his same level. That's the only time he doesn't take them out quick and stuff. So it's more fair. But, so yeah, it was really, really good. It was, I would say it was even, it was, it was just as powerful as the first time, if not more powerful, uh, with like the message that they sent. Like, uh, that, that movie is just so good. And and that's, and that's one thing too, is that movie is very different from a lot of the, the MCU movies. And so that impresses the heck out of me about it. And that's why I like it so much too, because it's not, it just, it doesn't fit the regular mold. I mean, there's parts of it that do. But overall, like, it's a lot darker, even though there is comedy, and there's just a lot of those, like, political and societal issues thrown in there that I don't think a lot of the other the other movies cover. And so that might scare, you know, once again, people who don't, uh, who don't like black people as much away, you know, you may like Ant-Man more, um, but, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, so I'm I'm pretty jacked. I'm pretty jacked about the uh, Iron Fist season two myself. I'm looking okay, forward yeah. to it. I just like said, haven't had the chance yet. Um, yeah, maybe I maybe it was just too confusing at parts for me, and I just didn't catch it. So I'm in the middle of Luke Cage season two. So maybe my opinion might change. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely have to talk more once once you finish season two because there's some great moments in season two of Black, of Luke Cage. Um, but yeah, uh, so I feel like the biggest thing we have to cover is uh, we both went to the uh, Dan Shea that Dan I like to say Dan plus Shea because they have the plus symbol, but it's just Dan and Shea. So Dan and Shea, we. Uh... We went there. What was it? September twelfth. Yes, it was a it was a Wednesday, and it was well. It's it's crazy because there was a lot. There's a lot included in this, which is it's this, it was dur- for the state fair during the state fair, and they had the rodeo. So it was like the rodeo and the concert, right? Right. Yeah. And so I've never actually been to a rodeo concert before. And I was even asking around at work, and I was asking on on Facebook, and it was weird because, like, you know, I really don't have – I feel like I don't have friends on Facebook that, that go to country concerts, you know? And so, like, nobody replied to any of them, and I put out, like, multiple ones. You know, I was even just being a cheeseball joking and stuff, you know, being like – Hey, uh, this is my first time going to a country concert. What what do I do? You know, like, do I show up on a horse? Do I have to wear, you know, like a cowboy hat and a cowboy boots, you know? And should I be wearing, like, a holster and, like, a six-shooter? You know, I don't know. Well, I think it's a mixture now because I saw a lot of skinny jean cowboys where they're, like, still hip. <laughs> but, they're we- but they're wearing, like, a cowboy hat, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, I don't know, cause like even my brother, he's kind of a he's kind of a poser cowboy, which is like I think he's a cowboy at heart, sure, but like when it comes down to it, he's not like he's a city boy absolutely to the core, and he dress, but he'll 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 go in the whole regalia and everything to the dirty bourbon on Thursday nights to go dance with with cowgirls, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, he's he's just. He's playing the game where he's, like, attracting the chick, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and me, I'm like, I'm not going to do that, you know. I'm married for one, so I don't need to. But second, I'm just, that's not me, so I'm not going to do that. Now, I did go. I did go wearing boots. And I did go, uh, now, not not cowboy boots, but just my old work boots that I used to wear and jeans, which I normally wear and have. And then I wore a Captain America shirt, which is also something that I nor- normally wear and have. So I was like, there's, there's, I mean, I know I'm a nerd with a bunch of, what did you call them? Like a Republican crowd or something? Or uh... <laughs> Well, at the beginning, you weren't there for this. They had like the, uh, couple members from the military and like some of the, sh- uh, 
Bernalillo County Sheriff Department, like, repel from the ceiling. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, I was like, and then they did, like, a prayer in, before it. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is such a Republican event. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to get in on that, on that prayer, though, right? With, like, your 20 million uh, father gods, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> no? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, but, um, no, I love it. I love it. I do. Um, it's fantastic. So, but yeah, I, like I said, I asked around and nobody really, I did. I talked to one guy and he's like, yeah, man, I've been, I've been. And, um, and he's like, he's like, just go. He's like, just wear the chaps. He's like, I just go in just chaps, you know? Um, and I'm like, mm, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. This is my first time. So maybe next time, you know, or when I get comfortable, but for now I'm just going to, and, and I didn't know when the concert was. Like, I didn't know if they were going to play first or they are going to play in the middle or they are going to play at the end. Now, my mind tells me they're going to play at the end because who's going who's gonna to go to the concert and then stick around for the rodeo? Whereas you're going to get a lot more people showing up for the rodeo waiting for the concert. Totally. And same thing. Like, my dad was like, oh, yeah, they play like halfway through and they bring the stage out in the middle and it spins. And I'm like... Is it like bulls that are pulling them out into the middle and <laughs> spinning this thing? Like, how this doesn't make sense to me. So well, I think of Phil Collins in the air tonight when he gets on the drum, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like spinning, you know. You yeah. Do solo. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or like, who was it that was like in the drum set and they were like upside down and like spinning? Was that Motley Crue? Or who I think was it that? Was, I think it was Motley Crue. I it can't was Tommy remember, Lee Jones or or someone. I don't know. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I didn't really know going in, and and my wife she got off school like really late. She got off school at four and didn't get home until like five thirty. And so and then I didn't know how to print the tickets. I, we have a printer and I don't even know how to print stuff. And she's like, "Oh, just use the laptop. Don't use the regular computer." And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know where that is, so I can't use it. She always is using it for school, even though I bought her a freaking iPad just for school, which she does use both. I mean, she she uses it, but she takes both, you know? Right. So she had to show me. She had to show me how to do that and print it, and then we jetted off. And, of course, traffic was bad because it's traffic hour and stuff. And then it's the fair. So as soon as we hit that turn, it was just like nonstop. And I was like, you know, we should just go around and see if there's parking somewhere else because we're going to wait in this forever and then we're not going to find any parking, you know? I was like, it's going to be... Did you know it was a dollar day as well? I didn't know it was dollar day. And that's what makes me wonder is if like, oh, hey, we're already doing the concert and the concert rodeo thing is like included in the price to the fair, you know? So you can get away with like just hey, I'm just going to go into the fair and do stuff instead of going to the rodeo or I'm going to do all of it, you know? Like, you could go and wait early that day and spend all day at the fair, which is kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, but, of course, like I said, I couldn't do because the wife got off school late. Um, and so so we got there. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to find somewhere to park. There was, like, no parking, even, like, the people that are paying for parking, you know? Like, they have lots to charge and uh th- those ones were full and i was like if i lived in that neighborhood i would have a sign out in my front yard and i'd be like you know five bucks for a parking spot even if it's at my house you know because why not like why not make some money or right. 10 bucks capitalize, you know? right? yeah capitalize off that crap man like you live by the fair you know do it yeah do it it's only comes around like once a year and imagine if you did like you could Every time, you know, if it, you circulated enough people coming in and out, you know, even if you only have like four spots in your in your driveway or whatever, that's 40 bucks if you charge 10 bucks. And then if you can get a circulation of four people a day, that's 80 bucks a day. And then you do that for what? How long is the fair? Like at least like two weeks or something? Yeah, yeah I think it is just two weeks. So, I mean, that's some cash if you were to do that every day, you know? So, but anyways, regardless, we couldn't find it, so I just found a spot on the side of the road, um, and I was like, ah, hopefully this is, we don't get towed, and, um, I don't even know if I remember to lock the vehicle again. I honestly don't. And the wife was like, 
she was like, you know what? If we didn't, well, we're just idiots and we deserve to get our shit stolen. And I'm like, true. That's that's good thinking. Um, so, but yeah, we got there late because like the rodeo actually started, what, 645, right? Yes, 645, yeah. And so I didn't know. And by the time we got in, it had to be at least like 730 by the time we actually got to the fair, I think. Because we, cause we still had to walk quite a ways. And, of course, the wife, once again, once again, once again, if you listen to the Vegas show, you know what I'm talking about here. Wearing the damn ballet shoes again. Again. And she pointed it out to me. She's like, oh. And it's, I'm like, really? Are you serious? Did you do this on purpose so that we wouldn't be able to walk around that much? I, I just think she doesn't, she just doesn't think. She's just, like, spaced out all the time. I think I'm just going to have to get a piece of, a pair of her sneakers Throw them in my vehicle because I have an extra pair of everything of my of my uniform of like shower shoes, towel, b- boots, you know, everything ex underwear, sh- undershirt, everything that you can imagine. Like I have tons of comp- I have like double of everything or more in my trunk. I don't know why I don't have a pair of her sneakers in there so that when she pulls that crap again, I can go. Well, boom, here we go, sneakers. You know. <laughs> we, it was actually kind of nice though because like you said the dollar day and so the line was super long and i was like oh my god we're never gonna get in there on time and luckily they had a separate line just for the event and so that line was not that long i actually did see a couple people from work um so that was kind of cool <laughs> and one guy was like i'm gonna have to narc on you you know uh if you if you called in sick um <laughs> and i'm like i used vacation relax I knew he was just kidding, but still, it's kind of annoying uh, when people. It's like, come on, you probably yeah, took big, big brother like, over there. You probably took the sick yourself, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, but whatever. And uh, I, I and that's the thing. I did. I did get vacation because I don't. I don't want to be in that predicament of like, oh, if I call in sick and I see something from work because people talk, you know, and it's gonna get out and. Oh man, it'll be a mess. So I don't, I don't mess with that, you know. Um, we were both starving. I, I have been on the game train pretty hardcore lately, and so I did, I did, uh, I think I did buys the day before, and so my arms had just been like screaming all day, and I was like, so every time that happens, I'm like, take a bite of protein bar, and I even took a nib before we left the car. And I was still like, still sore. So I was like, man, I'm starving. So I was like, I want to get something to eat. The wife wanted to get something to eat too before we went to the rodeo concert. And I didn't know when it was starting. And even I, I knew that you were going because you were going with the uh, with your girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and even uh, this. You found out on Facebook. Remember, Facebook told on me. And you're like, wait, how come you didn't invite me? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the frick, dude? I was like, I listen to more country than you, I imagine. Because I listened kind, to the country... Of. I knew all the songs. There. All the country... Oh, so now you're calling me out and saying I didn't know the songs, therefore I'm not a real fan. So <laughs> so I don't deserve to know about these things. I listen to the... To, if I'm not listening to country, the country station, I'm listening to it on my Apple Music, usually. It's that mm. or gangster rap. Completely opposite ends of the spectrum. But regardless, I had to find out, find out that way. And I'm like, what the frick... Okay, you know what? Yeah, I don't know all the songs. I don't have them memorized. Here's the thing. My wife gives me crap about this all the time is I don't absorb that well through audio, you know, like memorization-wise. But if I read it, memorized, you know. So so if I read the lyrics, I can memorize the lyrics, but I didn't have time to, to read the lyrics for all the songs. Now, I had been listening to Dan and Shay for like, uh, well, really, it was only like a week. I think I I had to get all this together and figure it out, you know, from from when I found out from you on Facebook and then uh, text you and got vacation and everything. Like, I just had a week to listen. I listened to all their albums. I actually like their previous album better. I think it's called Obsessed, better than their m- most current one. Oh yeah, totally. But it has like the big hit on the new one. Of but the- it has the tequila big hit, yeah, and uh. And what is it, uh, Sleepless, I think, or... Uh, speechless. Speechless, yeah, Speechless. Um, as Speechless. But I love Lately. To me, like, Lately is, is their best song, I think. 
Um, and just like I said, that whole Obsessed album is just fantastic. I felt like the Dan and Shay self-titled album is a little more mainstream and poppy and just not as, I don't know, it just wasn't as catchy to me. I don't know. It was like not, it was just a little too mainstream but not catchy enough, which is weird because it sounds contradictory. You know what I mean? Right. Of course, tequila is, you know, and it's like, and it's weird because it's like, I don't drink and I don't even like really can relate to that song even so much, but it's just a really good song, you know? Yeah, it's one of those uh, earworms, man. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's good. I mean, I I know other things that, that you know, I can relate it to, but anyways, uh, regardless, so the point is, we got there, we were both hungry, the wife was like, I want corn, she always wants her corn. She got her corn, and... That's so funny, because that's the first thing we did. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, hey, let me have some of that corn. And so, <laughs> and I was like, get that corn out of my face. You know, like, she's always trying to shove it in my face, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I try to do some, try something slightly different each time, you know? Like, I'll try, like, a different, like, barbecue sandwich at least each time that I go there or something. Even if it's the same place, but anyways, like she oh, wanted you had that the, the brisket, right? Uh, I don't know. I think it was just the beef. I thought it was brisket. It seemed like brisket tastes like brisket to me, but it was just like yeah, it was the beef like strips or whatever the barbecue beef sandwich. Yeah. It was really good. Um, and so like it was crazy because what happened is she she was like I want uh, she got the corn, and then she was like right next to it was this crepe place, crepeology, and she's like I want a crepe. You know? And so we got the crepe, and then it, like, leaked all over her. And, like, got all over her shirt and all over your pants. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, no, not at all, man. See? There you go. There you go. It, she, it, she, it, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't really staring at your wife, though. <laughs> yeah, true. I know. But still, like, I'm, you know, I, I don't think anybody really cared or noticed. But anyways. Um, I, I, yeah, I didn't notice at all, actually. So, but yeah, it was so it was funny because she got that she had the corn and then like she transitioned to that right away and then she was like, "Oh, I want ribbon fries too," and I was like, "Wife, I told you I'm freaking starving and my freaking you know bisectionals are freaking out of control right now and I need to feed them." And she was like, "Oh," then she got all sad and I'm like, "You had you already had corn and now you're your crepe like go eat your crepe while I go get this." And she was like all sad sitting there by herself while I go got one. So, and then after that, she was like, oh, I want ribbon fries and I want all this stuff. And I was, I was paranoid about being late to the concert because your phone was not like, it would text me, but it was like super late, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't get it till like at least 20 or 30 minutes after you had texted me. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was at least like 15 minutes late. And so I'm like, oh man, like there's such, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, you told me like, yeah, my phone's not as bad reception here and stuff. So Chelsea was like, Oh well, I was like, well, I just told him to tell me when the when the rodeo's over so that we can head over there, you know, because I figure like, oh, the rodeo's over, then it takes time to set up, and then we can get over there. But then she got me all paranoid and was like, oh yeah, well, his phone's not working, so I'm like, oh crap, well, we better go then, you know, I don't want to be late, you know, this is this is like my first time and stuff, I didn't know crap, so. Um, cause I, of course we still wanted to do a lot more stuff like walking around. We usually go get like the, the lining, like that ice cream with the lining on it. That's like the rainbow colored or it's like flavored, you know? Yeah. It's the different flavors. Yeah. Those are, that, that's such good ice cream. Uh, and then I usually like going to, uh, as a Spaniard, uh, I like to go to the native village and, uh, conquer it and force them to use like my religion. And then I eat all their food, rape and pillage, you know? Um, okay. no, I don't. It's... The Navajo taco? Or... <laughs> no, yeah, I do love, I did, I really did want to go get a, a Navajo taco, um, cause those are fantastic. Um, so when I'm like, oh, I don't need to go to the Spanish village, like I could just go to my parents if I want, uh, Manteca and everything that I eat, you know? <laughs> are you a fan of those deep fried, uh, candy bars or anything no i think i tried one once in fact it just showed up on my facebook memories and i looked depressed because i had a bite and it like made me sick like almost instantly oh really um i don't know if it was the twinkie or what it was but i think i had done it i've tried like i try like almost every year and it makes me sick and i don't know why i keep doing but this time of course i didn't do (laughs) it so 
Um, I just, like, want to test myself. Like, the fair is the every year that, like, I just test my stomach, you know? Because I, I usually don't eat that bad, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, actually, this year was my first year trying the deep-fried Oreos. Have you had those? Mm-mm. No, I haven't. Are they good? Oh, dude, yeah. Like, I was so surprised. Uh, I, I thought they were going to be different, but they were, like, melted. It was, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it was really nice. Y'all, I mean, I haven't <laughs> had those ones. Were they big? Was it really big? No, no. They were, like, little, like, Oreo-sized deep-fried with a little breading on top. And it was on a stick still? No, it wasn't on a No, not on a stick. You just get one of them, or you got, like, a whole package? Oh, there was, like, a six-pack for, like, seven bucks. You know how ridiculous the prices there are. Oh, dang. Dang, I don't know if I can handle six. Or <laughs> just just one, maybe. Well, well, I, I shared with my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm just saying for myself, because I know my wife probably wouldn't. Oh, yeah. You know, so. That's why you need, that's why you need me around. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Definitely. Definitely. We're, we're a good pair. It's weird, because it's, like... When I'm with my wife, I eat her leftovers, but when I'm with you, you eat my leftovers. <laughs> you know? It's really odd. Well, so, yeah, because if these people know what we look like, you're the, you're the small skinny guy, and I'm the big dude. <laughs> but still, like I said, I eat the wife's leftovers when I'm with her, so... Or I'll just, I'll eat her food, you know, like right there, not even necessarily like later, you know? Yeah. Um, but I do that too. But anyways, uh, so had you ever been to one of these things before? I've never been to a rodeo. I've okay. been to a country concert. So how was how was that for you? So yeah, this was my first time at a, at a rodeo. Uh, you know, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I thought it was going to be so boring and like weird, but it was actually really entertaining. They had uh, it's really good if you're ADD because they they went from one thing to the other. So, like, there was, like, the horse bat or, like, the horse riding where they're kicking like crazy, kind of like a bull. Oh, the Bronco, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the Bronco, yeah. And those dudes, like, it's crazy because they have to, like, arch their back. It almost looks like they're laying on the back of the horse and, <laughs> and doing that. It's, it was very impressive. You know, I know I wouldn't be able to hold on much long at all. And then they went to, like, this... Uh, like the hog tying thing, but it was with uh, little rams. Oh, okay. And they were like running around. It was pretty funny. And then I think you walked in on what the the dog thing. You remember? The there was a cowboy. monkey riding a dog that was chasing. Oh yeah, it had a monkey on its back, right? Yes. And what were they? What were they chasing? Was it? It wasn't sheep, was it? I thought it was actually calves, right? Yeah, they were. They, yeah, though they were. Yeah, they were chasing calves. I think. Yeah, or sheep. I don't even remember. It was just crazy. I was just like, "What's going on? What is this?" So, like, it had like this different element of like the show, like each time. So it wasn't like the same stuff over and over. So it was very, it was very entertaining. I thought, you know, there was times where it made me laugh. It, it was really cool because then at some parts they like would do fireworks and <laughs> it would scare the crap out of my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was yeah, it was fun. It was uh, fun and then then of course the concert. Yeah, so yeah, we actually came in and they were doing the uh they were doing the ladies were doing the barrel racing or whatever with the horses. Oh, yeah. And it was crazy cuz like, well, even when we were walking in and there's here's another thing I didn't know about uh these concerts. So, when we're walking to just like to the rodeo coliseum, what do they call it? Tingly Coliseum. Tingly. And so they have the giant freaking police horses out front. My wife's like, oh my gosh, I love these horses because they're huge. You know, she likes big things, obviously. Um, and so... <laughs> anyways, she, uh, so she's like screwing around her with her phone. And she's like, I gotta pull up this picture of this horse and stuff so I can show this guy. I'm like, nobody cares. Just like, just talk to the guy and don't, don't quit messing with your phone. Just like be here in the moment and just like enjoy the horse and talk to the guy and stuff and like pet the horses and stuff like quit messing with your phone and she's like but i gotta show him and i'm like you're wasting time come on you know i was in a rush to get in there because i didn't know if we were late uh (laughs) so because it was already getting close to around like 8 30 i think so um 
but yeah, so she she BS'd with the with the policemen and, and their giant horses and stuff. And then we went in, and the lady that was at the door wasn't even paying attention, so I just walked in, you know. I was like, I've never been here. I didn't know that that lady was there to check us, because, like, if she was, she's doing a horrible job because she wasn't paying attention, you know. Right. And there was, like, a long line, so I was like, oh, well, maybe this is this is the line I have to get in. And it was actually the line for beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the wife's like, get back here. Of this course, lady that's, had... like, one of the longest lines. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I was like, and so the wife was like, get back here. We, she has to check our things. And I was like, I didn't know she was paying attention. You know, it's not my fault. Uh, so she checked our tickets and stuff. And then they had these two lines that were like for, like they said, pay five bucks and you can be on the floor. And I was confused because I was like, I'd never been there before. I didn't know what that meant. And so I didn't real I didn't realize until later that you pay five bucks and you can be down in the dirt, like right, essentially like right where the stage is, you know, which to me is brilliant in multiple ways. Cause I go like, okay, so now this is like just a regular concert, except I can pay for the cheapest ticket in the whole place, then pay an extra five bucks when I get in, and it's cheaper than the most expensive seats, which were 40 bucks, and it's even closer, you know? Right. So I'm like, 25 bucks? Like, that's freaking great. I was, I would, if I knew what it was all about, I would have been totally down to do that. Of course, um, it just didn't happen. So you right. know, maybe next well, time. I was also worried that like the like cows and the bulls and the calves and the yeah <laughs> the crap, dude. Right, right, and and you know, like I said, I I wore boots and I'm wearing jeans and stuff. I didn't. I was like, oh, I expect it. I know where I'm going, so I kind of expect that type of thing. You know, um. So it was funny too because when we were walking in, she's like, "Oh yeah, the wife's all talking crap about all these cowgirls." They're like. Oh, they're basic bitches and they're fake and stuff. And I'm like, you know, you're wearing like Victoria's Secret and you're wearing these ballet shoes and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, they probably think the same thing about you, but different, <laughs> right? Like, and and so, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just. And then, like I said, they there are those barrel girls or the the ladies were doing those bar- the barrel racing, and she was judging them. And I was like, who the f for you to be judging? And she was like. Oh, I used to do this with my dad because he used to he used to work here, and so I would do this with him. I've done stuff like this with him before, you know. And I'm like, right. I've been with, I've known you for twelve years, and this is literally the first time I'm hearing about this. And I was just like stunned because like I'm like because I've even asked her. I think I even asked her because there's a song. There's a there's a song. I think I want to say it's Luke Bryan, and the name of the album is is called. It's this as well, as well as the song, which is uh, What Makes You Country. And at first when I heard it, I was like, oh, it's a song that's about, like, it's shaming people. Like, the the album and the song is about shaming people because they're not country. And I, you listen to it, and it's more about, like, praising even the little things about yourself. Like, be proud of any little thing that makes you country, you know? Um, and stuff. And so I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's a really great song. And so I brought that up to her. I was like well, hey, this is what I think makes me country. And so I was like, what about you? And she didn't mention that. I don't even think she answered me. She was probably like, you're stupid, I don't care, or something like that, and blew me off. And then this comes up, you know, like a week later or something like that, right? Right. And then she gets mad at me because she's like, oh, you make me come here to the rodeo and it reminds me of my dad. I hate you, you know, and I'm like, you know, and she's crying. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, oh geez. And I told her too. I was like, you know, I told you you didn't have to come because I knew you had to study, and you don't even like this stuff. Like, you don't, you don't like the con, you don't like going to concerts, especially you know, country concert. Like, you don't really like country, especially new country and stuff. And I'm like, I so there's a lot of reasons that you didn't have to come. I was like, I could have just gone with Dan and Shay. I mean, uh, Ann and AJ. And been the third wheel. I'm like, how many times has AJ been our third wheel? I don't think it would be a big deal, you know. Right. So yeah. But it's it's you know there's there's reasons for that and uh, multiple reasons for that um, that we won't get into right now. But uh, anyways, it did take him a long time. Like, oh, that was the other thing is the bull riding was pretty cool too. 
I will say, like, yeah. that's another thing. It's impressive. I'm not going to deny it's not impressive to do that and stuff. And there's just a lot of things in my head, though, where I go, like, why do people do this? Like, risk-reward, I just don't see it, you know. And, like, it just doesn't compute to my mind, like, someone, why someone would do that, you know. But I talked to this guy from work, and he would told me some stuff about it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's that's really cool. Still, I think those guys are really hardcore badasses, you know. Um, totally. They got some uh, some cojones, as they say, right? <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's it's that was pretty cool. Like I said, impressive and um, and yeah. So but then they 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 shut that down. Oh, it was funny though, cause like they have this timer sound that goes off in between like each bull ride, and it was funny because like the guy talks super fast, and so it sounded like he was kind of bleeping himself out. <laughs> Every time it happened, because he would be talking like oh, yeah. right up to that point, and then he would hit the, and then the timer would go off, so it sounded like he was bleeping himself out. So I kept on making jokes that that guy cusses a lot and that he bleeps himself out. But uh, I thought and it was funny. He said the f word too. Yeah, <laughs> you said that. Yeah, and so uh, it was stupid, but it was funny. And um, and yeah, so it took him forever to set up for the concert. I was a little disappointed. The the. Uh, they, the stage was not brought out by bulls, um, or horses or anything like that. It was just kind of lowered and stuff. And then they had a thing in the center. It was pretty cool though. And kind of funny that there was a truck that just like pulled in not that far away from the stage with like hauling a trailer that had recliners on it. And it was funny cause like during the concert, they actually mentioned that and they're like, I've been to a lot of, of rodeo concerts and just country concerts, and then they're like, I've never, ever seen anything like this before. So, leave it up to New Mexico, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave it up to New Mexico, exactly. So it's, it's you got to give it props, you know, for something here in the Nuevo <laughs> I Mexico. I don't know. It was funny, too, because, like, the whole time they would be like, yeah, you know, you guys are the best. And, like, every time I think we're like, lies, you're, you're wrong, lying, you know, like... <laughs> I was telling you we should have made it like a drinking game. So like every time he said Albuquerque, take a shot. Yeah, he did say Albuquerque a lot. So I just, I wanted, honestly, I wanted to get drunk to get wild and to cut loose. But I didn't need the alcohol because like as you saw, I was, I stood up. I was shaking my ass in front of the wife's face, rubbing on her. You know, I was having a fun dancing on my own, even though the wife was like, she was tired. She was even studying at one point, and she was just like, she didn't really recognize that many of the songs. Don't blame her for that. Not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a really solid concert. I I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I really loved it. Uh, we actually ended up moving. See, well, I did because I was sweating my balls off where I was sitting, so I needed some air conditioning and. Luckily, the seats by me were empty, so that's where you... I, actually, you guys ended up joining us up there because there was enough open seats. Yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it because they played everything, like, and then they kind of try to cock tease you by not playing, like, the, their hit songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, good night, and then you're like, no, that's BS. <laughs> Yeah, that was really annoying and kind of pissed me off because they did it multiple times. Yes, they did, yeah. <laughs> like, I would have been fine with it, like, once and maybe even twice, but, like, by the third time, I was just a, I was just annoyed. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was ridiculous. <laughs> they did have, uh, uh what... what but the, the lights, man, the light, the light show, it was just, it was amazing, and they... They sound just like their CD live, and I appreciate when bands sound like that, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. So overall, you know, like, it, it, it was great. Like, I really want to go to another Dan and Shay if they ever come back. Oh, uh, and the dude from Rascal Flats was there. So yes. That was pretty cool, too. I was going to mention that the lead singer from Rascal Flats, surprise, showed up. I think they've been... Uh, touring with him and so but he was like the only one that went with him or something i don't know yeah that, that, that was cool man so yeah i, I love the concert it was really cool and the fair got we got a turkey leg and uh i got that pulled pork sandwich that i was telling you about 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. The barbecue sauce there was great. Oh, it is so good. Yeah, so the yeah, the show was really great. I was I liked it a lot. Like I said, I was dancing, I was having a good time. You know, I sang to as many songs that I remembered. Like I said, I had I'd been listening to it for like a week nonstop. And so and then afterwards, yeah, I got a I got a a turkey leg on my way home or before I left. We got those ribbon fries. And we got a we got a s'mores we got a s'mores, what was it, a uh, funnel cake, because they were out of, like, almost all the other ones. We ended up, like, barely eating any of it, and then just left it in the fridge. Was it disgusting? No, it was really good. I just, we, we didn't, because I was driving, and it was, it was messy, so we didn't, we didn't eat that much of it on the way home, and then once we got home, we both had to go to bed, so, uh, so, I mean, I ate, I, we ate, we ate it the next night, you know. Uh, I think after I got home or something like that, I, I came home. I might have come home early, I think, maybe. And so, yeah, I, I I came home a little bit early, so not too much, but a little bit. And so I ended up eating it. It was so sweet that I couldn't even finish it. I was like, I'm done, I'm done, it's too much. So it was really good. But yeah, uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It was it was a fantastic show. Um, but uh, and is there really anything else besides that? No, actually, I think we covered everything, you know. Uh, you did say Dallas beat the, um, was it oh, the yeah. Sex Panthers? Oh, yeah, the Giants, yeah, so. Oh, the Giants. I mean, yeah, so it actually looks like the Cowboys are good, but who knows, maybe the Giants just suck that bad. So, but, I mean, that's just even better, though, because we're both uh, in the in the East, so. Right? Divisions. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to factor that stuff in, like, oh, yeah, if they're in our division and they lose, then that's good for us, you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard they've been they've been doing kind of bad lately and stuff. I don't know. I feel really weird about football lately just because, like, and it's weird that I got into this discussion with this guy at work since, like, that's what he's all about is watching football, whether it's, like, college or professional. But I think he likes college more just because – the the players don't get paid the same way that they do in professional, you know. And so like he was just talking about how like just essentially how they're like like there's this huge divide because you have players and they're getting millions of dollars. He's like, Yeah, there's this player and he's getting this much per game and you go like that is what we earn in a lifetime, what they make in one game, you know? Totally. And you go like that's some messed up, that's some messed up ethics and just like business ethics, right? <laughs> and you're just like that, like that, that divide is just ridiculous. But what I thought about even crazier than that is like, okay, we think about all these people getting paid so much money for sports, but when you think about it, how much are the people who pay them making? You know, like for for getting. Because they're making money, you know, showing it, these games, and they're making money, you know, within the stadiums with all those seats. They're making way more because the owners can afford to pay their players this giant amount of money. And I go, like, those are the guys, they talk about the one percenters, those are the guys right there that are making so much money that it's atrocious. Yeah, sure, it's ridiculous that we're not paying, like, police and teachers, you know, way more money, and we're not dividing that. So I feel weird about watching sports now because I'm kind of like I'm kind of like on this strike where I'm like I don't want to support that. I don't want to support that anymore because that's messed up in my head that people in our military and people out on our streets are risking their lives, and yet we're paying somebody not we, but there's a there's a ridiculously atrociously rich one percenter white guy that is paying. You know, um, majority of majority, not all, but a good majority black people to, to play these sports, you know, and they're, you know, and I, and I can appreciate like LeBron making schools and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, it's still a flawed system, you know? Well, yeah, totally. There's, there's such disparity, but I guess that's like another reason why this, why it makes this country... Uh, quote unquote great is like there's just so much opportunity to be what you can be but you know I don't know how you pretty much define that because it could just be like a handout or 
Right, you could bust your ass and just, like, I'm making this my life goal is to be a basketball player, to be a baseball player, or to be, I mean, I don't know how much baseball player, but anyways, you know, to be in sports, you just devote yourself to that and make that your thing, then yeah, I guess so, but how many people have that opportunity? I mean, I I feel like basketball may be easier than football because football's, like, you know, you have to pay for all the pads and all that stuff unless you go through school, you know, and stuff. Uh, basketball seems like the easiest one. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just I feel weird about that. But what game and, and industry, I, I don't really... I don't know. I have issues with it still is the gaming industry, which is like usually I just wait until games are cheap and the, the big game right now is Spider-Man. And I was like, I'm not going to buy it until it's cheaper because I'm busy playing all these other games that are old, you know, uh, yeah. that I haven't beat yet. And so... And the wife just ended up getting it for me because she's like, oh, everybody's talking about it. I know you wanted to get it. so And I, I don't get myself games unless they're cheap because I go like, well, I could wait a year and get a game that has all the DLC with it for half the price. Or I could pay the full price and get it without any of the DLC. In fact, it may not even be a complete game right now with like glitches and everything else, you know. Right. Um, so, but she got it for me. Uh and and she got it for me for cheaper at Costco, and I love it. It's a phenomenal game. I just love I love being Peter Parker. Like the stories where you're like with your aunt May, you know, at the uh, homeless shelter, you know, like just talking to her and helping her. And then when you just have like conversations with um, or meals with uh, Mary Jane, like, those are great. Or even, like, fidgeting with gadgets with Otto Octavius, you know, and stuff. Like, it is, it's just so much fun just being Peter Parker, you know. And it's, it's so cool. Uh, there's, and there's so much, there's, like, so much to explore. And everything that you find, like, all the extras, you know, like, there's backpacks, there's landmarks, you know. There's things you can take pictures of. There's so many side quests, but every single one of them helps you. And, and like, can help, like, improves, you know, like, builds up your experience and your stats or, like, you know, your suits or your tech or, you know, all these different things. Whereas, like, most games, like Assassin's Creed is one of those where, like, you're like, why am I doing this? Oh, to get a cape that's a different color? I don't care, you know? <laughs> it's stupid. It's it's usually just physical and, and there's no, there's really no perks to it or not much of a perk. And so it just it's, ends up being a waste of time other than, like, maybe getting an achievement. Some of them you don't even get achievements or, or trophies for, you know. Um, so, but it is a blast. I will say the biggest problem I have with it, though, is, like, I already said before, there's, uh, on, my, on my Facebook, which is right away, I could tell that there's problems with the boss fights. And there's problems with the boss fights, which is a couple things. For one, like, gaming has gone the way of, like, oh, we're trying to strip the screen clean and we're trying to make it seem like it's not that much of a video game and, like, it's more realistic, it's more immersive. Okay, you know what? That's fine. I still want to see my enemy's life bar, you know, especially if it's a boss so I know how many times I'm hitting them and if it's making any damage, you know? So that's one thing that's missing from from the boss fights. The other one is that you have to figure out how to beat a boss and if you're doing something, you don't know if it's working until uh, until it moves on to the next stage of the fight. And so, even if, and if you fail in the next stage, it resets back to the beginning. So you're like, man, this is a real pain. Like, you know, I, I feel like there's a shocker one that was pretty good, but it was still one of those things where I was like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. It's still like you try one thing and then that doesn't work and then you try another thing and it doesn't work. And it doesn't give you any hints. You know, like certain games that are made that way, that are designed that way where you have to figure out their weaknesses or a certain strategy, they give you hints. And this isn't one of those games. So that's another thing. The other big thing that I have a problem with is that I'm always getting punked by regular dudes. Like, and I, I have the same problem when in the Arkham games where I'm like, you face, like, dudes that are armed, you know, and some of them have, like, guns. Some of them have, you know, weapons, and some of them are just regular dudes. Some of them are just, like, big dudes, and they just take you out in, like, two, three hits, and you're like, are you serious? Like, I'm freaking Spider-Man. I should easily, like, if it seems weird to me that, like, dodging 
is something that you have to hit a button for when it should just be something that he automatically reacts to. You know what I mean? Like That's spider sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have natural spider senses. Why wouldn't I dodge that naturally? You know, like it just doesn't make sense to me. Um the other, the biggest, but like I said, the biggest part is I'll face these big dudes, these brawlers, and they take me out in like two or three hits, and I'm like, he's just a big guy. I have the proportionate strength of a freaking spider. How am I not killing this dude in like three hits? Why am I not spinning this dude on my fingertip and then tossing his ass? This is stupid that I'm getting taken out with by this big guy because I'll like dodge him, and then they just hit me. Like, I can't time my dodge as well with those guys, and... Like I said, it only takes a few minutes, I mean, a few hits, and they beat you. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, they should not be able to beat me this easily, you know? It, it's it's really ridiculous how many times I get taken out by a bunch of nobodies, you know? But beyond... So that, that's for the PS4. Okay, that's for right? the PS4, yeah, just the PS4. Beyond that, that game is, like, not, almost perfect, you know? These are, like, minor things, you know, and really... The crazier you get with the combos, the more fun it is and the harder it is for them to attack you. Like, if you're keeping enemies, like, you uppercut an enemy in the air and then you jump in the air and you just pound them in the air and, like, you can kick them away and then web them towards you and bring them back and hit them. And, like, you do all these... Once you just start getting wild and you don't think about it too much, I wouldn't say button mashing necessarily, but you just get creative with it, that's when it's the most fun and that's when you're mo- you'll, like, all of a sudden be like... Holy crap, I just took out a whole crowd of dudes and they didn't kill me, you know? That reminds me of the Wolverine game, and you remember that one? Yes. That Origins one? That one was that was a really good game. Man. That was pretty visceral, yeah. That was a pretty wicked that was pretty and no yeah, when you got wild with those combos slicing people up, that was freaking wicked. Yeah, dude, it, it was sick. It is it is similar to that, but like I said, uh it is similar to that, but also like I said, it's it's if I was to compare it to anything, I would say it's more like, um, it is a lot like the Arkham games, but because he's so different, he's so agile, it's just, it's not. And then the story is so focused on Peter Parker's life rather than Spider-Man, you know? Um, and so, so that's, that's a big part of it too, which continues to make me believe that if they were to make a Daredevil game, it would be gold because you could do him and the him and you know if they were to do like a mashup of L.A. Noir, the Arkham Asylum games, and like the Walking Dead games, or, or you know, or slash like the you know the the Telltale games, essentially, if they were to mash those into one and make a Daredevil game out of it, I think it would be the greatest game ever. And I've been saying for years that they need to do this, and I'm like, this game just continues to prove it because. The best parts are being Peter, and I think the best parts, some of the most funnest parts of being Matt Murdock would be his normal life and his court life, you know? Like, you could be like, object, you know, and stuff like that. Like, (laughs) all this stuff, you could pick your choices of, like, what you want to say for, like, your defense, you know, or whatever. Like, I think it would be really cool, and I think they should really do it. And I don't know why you haven't rallied behind this, because you are the biggest Daredevil fan I know. You know, I... But... I, I just always, uh, I've been real when it comes to this. It's been great that the Netflix show's been taken off like it has, so maybe eventually there'll be a Daredevil game, but, you know, who knows? I'm, I'm just holding out hope because for many, many years they've never had Daredevil anything. Yes, yeah, that is very true. And and we'll see. I think with Season 3 it's going to get a huge redemption from Season 2 because I just think it's going to be great based off of the uh, the storyline that they're going to go with. Totally, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be it's exciting, you know. Which I think is like Born Again or Reborn or something like that or Reborn Again. Yeah, Reborn. So, you know, I've been uh, just catching up a lot. Of, you know, we already talked about the Netflix. Uh, you you said you rewatched Black Panther, right? Yes. Yeah, so so did I and uh, you know, there's just subtle uh, nuances that I didn't catch the first time seeing it. And it's and it's just great seeing it again, you know, just the the com- camaraderie. I can't even say it. So it's like the, you know, like the the fellowship of Wakanda. Yeah, is what intrigued me. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's so good. Oh, I just I got so emotional watching that movie, man. Like it's just it's so intense, especially at the end where you just see them all fighting, and especially with uh, Okoye. You know, and her husband, he's like, you know, you would kill me for this? And she was like, Psh, for my country? 
heck yeah, you know? And I, it just made me think, like, of all the shootings we have and all the all the violence we have in our country. And I go, like, we are we are constantly killing our own countrymen more than any country kills us, you know? Totally. And 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 that thought just like they just saddened me, you know. We're just killing each other, and we're all of the same country and everything. And we, and we let stupid things like, uh, you know, color and just minor differences, you know, because really we're a lot more alike than we are at the. Just like he says at the end, right, when the extra credit scene, we're a lot more alike than we are, you know, different. And and, and so, and we are. We 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 really should be. You know, helping people, it's the, that's the other thing is we really should be helping people who are less fortunate, you know, you know, uh, giving people clothes that don't have clothes, feeding people that, that are, that are hungry, you know, um, I'm not about giving homeless people money, but you know, honestly, I've legitimately thought like, I, I wouldn't mind, you know, giving one a shower and some food in an outfit and being like, Hey, Let's let's see if we can get you some interviews. You know, let's get on the computer. You know, or whatever, because yeah, totally. they probably don't have access. You know what I mean? And and so and I don't know. Just a lot of that stuff, amongst other things, have just put that in my mind of like, you know, I I, I just want to do more for other people because I have so much that it's to the point where it's too much. You know, where I don't even have places for these comics and and I you know and I have extra. Uh, in, clothes that i that i don't wear because i usually only wear like the same like five ten things that are brand new you know and uh and yeah so i don't it's like i said it's 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 a powerful movie in so many ways and 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 that's why i think it's such a phenomenal movie is just the the multiple messages in it oh yeah there's just yeah there's just so much symbolism and just it was really cool just to see you know like the Black Panther. Uh, I do remember remember the animated series. That one was really good too. Oh yeah, the animated series was great. You know, it's one thing. It's really weird. I mean, this got me like both times, but each time when like they're at the beginning and they have like the ceremonies and they got the drums, dude. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny it. I'm like I'm up and I'm like slapping my knees, you know, and I'm like hitting my shoulders and I'm getting into it, you know, and I'm like shaking my titties and shoulders and shit. You know, like, I'm in it. It makes me tear up. I don't know why, man. I don't know what it is about those drums, you know, and then and, and just, like, the the culture, man. It's it's just so rich and stuff. I don't know if I got some roots in there or what, but I just I just feel it in my soul, you know? And I feel weird even going to sing, like, Wakanda Forever because I'm like, am I is that cultural appropriation? I don't even know because it's a fictional thing, but I almost feel like I'm appropriating, you know, like an African thing. You know what I mean? It's weird. <laughs> Come the forever. <laughs> but at the same time, my brother, my brother and I have been like, oh, like I'm part, I'm, I'm from the border tribe because the border tribe seems to be like, you know, like more, um, like more petite dudes. And I won't lie that I love, I would love riding an armored rhino. I mean, even though rhinos are automatically armored, like those, that was legit. And then my brother's like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like the mountain tribe. And I was like, oh, for sure. Cause he's a big dude, you know? Right. So yeah, it's it's just kind of you know stuff like that. It's, you're just like it's just it's cool. Uh, so did you hear that they're gonna do a uh, uh, live action last uh, last Airbender for Avatar? It's live action on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's gonna be like a series, and it's gonna be with the original creators. So it's gonna be a series. Well, I think yeah, I think they're just doing like a. You know, kind of like a live action version of the show, the Nickelodeon show. Oh, okay, cool. From what I'm understanding, I could be completely wrong though. I don't know. Like it's it's I I there's both parties are are like you know there's people that are like oh I'm really excited about this because the M Night Shyamalan was awful. I don't think you could do like visually that it looked cool, but that was about the only thing that was cool about it. Um, true. True. And and. So, but there's a lot of people I think that are also that are still scared because it's Netflix doing it, and they've seen them do other anime. Which this is weird. It's a weird middle ground because it's kind of like American anime, sort of. Right. So it's you're like, well, I don't know if it falls in those same lines, but they've done. I think they did. 
what is it? Full Metal, Full, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, right? Yeah, they did. And so that was okay. I saw it, and it was okay. But a lot of people raged about it. A lot of people complain about it. Um, and then there was also the people. There was also there's the Notebook one, but that one was completely different because they just fully Americanized Death Note. Yeah. And that so that's different. And people didn't like that one. I thought it was all right considering what they did, what they you know what they were going for. It was fine. Um, so I I don't know. I I have higher hopes for this. I don't know if it's going to be better than those other things, but I hope it is. I hope so too. But you know, it is with the original creators. So yeah, I think they could probably produce something that's you know. Just as good as the animated one. Higher quality, yeah, for sure. Been uh, besides any Dan and Shay, have you been listening to anything else? You know, I, I've also been prepping for um the Dirks Bentley Lanco concert. So I had been before the Dan and Shay. That's what I was mostly listening to, and so and I've gotten back to listening to that. But I've been listening to it so much that I'm like, uh, I get. Not, I get, yeah, I do get kind of sick of it just like listening to the same things over and over again. So I'm like, I need to trade it, switch it up. But that's mostly what I've been listening to. Um, you know, and then just some random things. Chris Young, she's got this thing about her. That's the name of the song, um, which is what it sounds like. And then Neon Moon, which is uh, Brooks and Dunn. And that one's just about just like, it's essentially about being lonely, you know, like looking up at the moon just by yourself, you know, type thing. And uh, I also listened to Trace Adkins because I heard that there was a concert at the uh, Sandia Casino on the 15th. And so I was like, well, do I want to go to that one? Probably not, but I'm going to listen to the music and see if I missed out on something. And I listened to it and I'm like, ah, he's all right. You know, well, like the old school country. He yeah. is more, yeah, he is more old school country. Yeah. Definitely, I like, listened to it and I'm like, this, I will say, like, this sounds a little chauvinist. A lot of, uh, quite a few songs, you know? <laughs> Um, and then Cody Johnson's supposed to play October 5th, I think at the Sunshine or at the, uh, or at the other one, the Launchpad, I'm not sure. I think it's the Sunshine because it's 25 bucks. So, and he's more like country country, you know, um, but he is newer at the same time. So it, it doesn't have that same sound, but like lyrically and everything, it is more country. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go to that one because I'm like. Well, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm just, I don't know if I'm that hardcore about him. I, I listen to his stuff. Um, I feel like I need to throw in some rap this month, so I'm probably going to get into some rap, but I don't know what yet, you know? Right. Whatever the next best, I've been going through like the top 10 or whatever best, uh, best rap albums of all time is what I've been doing. I did also download the Black Panther album which i've heard before and it was it was really great like that does it have like that tribe music on it uh i don't remember if it does or not i i I thought it was like mostly rap music but it was it's a very interesting soundtrack because i think it's an original all original soundtrack made just for the movie and it it has a very interesting like flow to it i did notice like all the like cut scenes where it was like showing Wakanda or whatever, you know, it's all playing like this crazy rap. Yeah, what about you? What have you been listening to? Well, I've just been listening to some Dan and Shay, uh, and, you know, actually a lot of country lately. Uh, Blake Shelton, did you ever listen to him? Yeah, he, I, I, he's surprisingly really good. He really is, yeah, I was, I was surprised. I don't like him on that voice show, but I like his music. I, I almost feel like the voice gives inspiration to the people that are on that show. I mean, I can't speak for all of them, but at least for like Maroon 5 guy and Blake Shelton, I feel like it kind of inspires them working with like young artists or just work or, or even being on a panel with other artists helps them get like those creative juices flowing because they put out songs that don't sound all the same, you know? Right. And stuff like it's it's really interesting. Even like his one like about life, and you listen to it, and you're like, this kind of sounds like he was just talking to people or telling his is it his girlfriend or wife or whatever like stories about being a kid. And then he's like, I'm just gonna turn this into a song, you know? Right. Um, 
and other stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty. He's pretty solid. Um. So I. Yeah. I, yeah. He has a lot of hits. Uh, and then I was also listening to Dustin Lynch. Have you heard of him? It sounds familiar. He does that Cowboys and Angels song. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I would sing it, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, here's my thing about country, and because my wife has asked um, about, like, where, where is this coming from? Where are you getting all this? Where is this, you know, why are you getting into country? Why are you getting into all this stuff? What's up with that? And I explained it to her today, which is, you know, in my youth, in my, in my high school years, it was all about, like, more, like, heavy metal angry angsty music you know i listen to a lot of corn and just a lot of like you know angry music and, and that's where i was you know that's where my mind was and i was just like oh uh, you know angsty and all that and then after high school you know and stuff it got more into like the emo and screamo phase where it and, and it was so, my music was more about like breakups than anything else because that's what was a lot like relationships and breakups you know going on you know and uh i'll be honest I, I really didn't have that much of an open mind either for music uh back in high school and as time i've slowly had an open more of an open mind i will say like i hated old school country music i still kind of don't like it that much but i'm i can i can uh tolerate it now at least whereas i just completely hated it in high school and even like I, I refused to listen to the Beatles in high school just because of like my religious views and stuff, which sounds kind of stupid, but, um, but yeah. And so, and 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 just like I said, as time has gone on, like I got into the Beatles, and most of their songs are about love, you know. And then uh, and now, like that's the biggest thing about listening to country is there's so many songs that are about love, and honestly, that's why I love it so much is because that's what I want kind of my life to be surrounded by and with now at the where I am at in life is like that's it I just I don't want hate anymore I don't want anger I don't want that angsty stuff I don't want that breakup stuff I don't want that emo stuff and like I can still listen to it from time to time and be like okay you know but at the same time like I just like it's all about the love for me now yeah totally man uh I guess, like, once you start getting older, you kind of appreciate, like, some of the stuff that you didn't like in the past. Yeah, I think that uh, that can probably even include food, but... Oh, yeah, totally. Taste buds. Taste aren't bros. Those, like, aren't those supposed to, like, change every seven years or something like that? I, I, well, I remember. heard, like, your blood, your blood changes uh, every seven years. So, like, you're, you can even change, like, me, I, I was, used to eat seafood all the time, and then... All of a sudden, I became allergic to seafood. That's interesting. So, and uh, and other stuff, like even grapes. My dad gave me some grapes the other day, and I was like, I think it's been a long time since I had grapes. I wonder if I'm still, like, mildly allergic to grapes. And then I had them, and I felt ill. Um, but not, like, horribly allergic, you know? Just, like, uncomfortable. Yeah, but other than that, you know, like, um, at work, I just listen to music in the background. We kind of, like... Some like guitar stuff and Blink One Eight Two. I'll throw on their station on Pandora. What was that new John Mayer song? Or I... oh yeah, the light. Or yes, new new light. New light. Yes, my wife actually shared it with me through the video, and the video was hilarious. And I was like, I love this song too. It's such a good song, and it is essentially kind of like a love song, right? Yeah. Where, but it's like a funny, goofy, fun love song where it's just about like, kind of like being like, sort of like a needy attention whore with your chick and stuff, you know? Um, so it's, it, but it's, 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 it's great. Like it's a hilarious video and it's a wonderful song. I downloaded it right away. That one was freaking great. So. There's even like different versions. Like there's, I think there's even like a techno mix of that one. Yeah, I saw that, but I was like, I just want, I just want the regular one. <laughs> the video was like uh, I think it was all like his idea and it was like very cheap to, to film yeah it seemed like mostly green screen but it was just really fun and really funny yeah yeah that's like that's basically it man yeah, I'm kind of caught up on what I what I've been doing like you know like the Pokemon Go I'm walking around uh, haven't been going to movies much 
So they changed Movie Pass, so I'm kind of pissed about it, but not because it's not it's not big of a deal. Yeah, I heard the the like people. I don't know. The CEO was like, "Yeah, don't cancel your Movie Pass or don't you know whatever because it's still good or something." Because people got upset. What was it about? Well, they changed the price, and then they also changed. Um, you can only see three movies a month now. Oh, okay. So in, instead of before, you could go to a new one every day. Uh uh-huh. And now they limit it to three. But after I thought about it, I was like, you know, I only like go to the movie theaters maybe three or two or three times a month on a good month. And how much is it like a month or whatever it is? Well, it's uh, nine ninety nine a month. A month, yeah. Yeah, so it's not bad. You're still you're still getting two movies for free essentially. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I would say more than, because most movies are like 15 bucks now. Yeah, that's true. So, that's still a heck of a deal. But I think the Cinemark one has where it's eight ninety nine a month, and you get three movies a month. And then you get, like, a discount. Like, if you, if you like, buy another ticket, there's, like, it's for only eight ninety nine. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it's just, like, there's all these things now. I think it was kind of like with Netflix, like, when they... Well, they used to be like six bucks or something. They used to be super cheap, and then they raised their price, and people lost their mind. And I was like, it's still a good deal, you know? Oh yeah, totally. With all the content, you know, like Netflix, is... up, all their original shows, man, they're knocking it out of the park. Yeah, and just like all the stuff they have, like it's just crazy too, because it's like they're still way better than any other service out there. Because like Hulu, you still have to watch commercials, and it's more expensive. You know, I think it's like fifteen bucks for Hulu. And you still have to watch commercials. I'm like, why am I paying for this when Netflix is cheaper and I don't have to watch commercials? Yeah, I think I think it's just because it's all the newer shows, you know. So that's how they get away with it. It's just kind of dumb. I don't know. And then there's other stuff too, because like the wife's like into anime pretty hardcore, and so like there's we had Crunchyroll, but then like half the time the app doesn't even work. So it's like a pain in the butt, and then she's like, oh, I'm going to do Funimation, but like, I don't know if Funimation, I think Funimation's real, but you can pay for it too. Like, well, there's always the free version, which, see, and that's, that makes sense to me. It's like, okay, the free version is you have to watch commercials, and then the non-free version, you don't have to watch commercials, because now you're paying, you know? Now, if Hulu did the same thing, I'm like, okay, we're in business, you know? But it's just BS otherwise. So, but yeah, I think like, like I said, Crunchyroll does that. I don't know about Funimation, but yeah, I know the wife wanted to go see that. Uh, what was it that like? It's kind of like the puppets, the puppets murder mystery or whatever. Oh, really? The Happy Time Murders or whatever? Yes, yes. She wanted to see that. Um, I I wasn't too sure about that one because I'm not really into that type of comedy. In a Muppet comedy? Well, yeah, but it's like more of them like. Oh, they're having sex and all like that weird, that weird stuff. Kind of like uh, Sausage Party. Did you ever see that? Sausage Party was kind of awful. So that's what I was thinking that would be. Yeah, I don't know. I just like what's her name, and uh, yeah. like Melissa a, McCarthy, right? Yeah, Melissa McCarthy and a filthy Muppets doesn't sound too bad to me. <laughs> that uh, Life of the Party, I was actually pleasantly surprised with that one. Yeah, well, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Plus, you get to see a lot of hot check college chicks, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking the other day, man. I was like, I wonder what, like, college would be like now. Like, because back in the day, it was just like, there's so many hot girls there. Dude, I'm sure it's just as worse, man. It's like with the, uh, like, Matthew McConaughey and that one movie, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Days and confused. They keep getting, they or we keep getting older, and they stay the same age. Oh, uh, but yeah, I just think it would be awkward because now we're like old men, kinda, sorta. <laughs> we're getting there. Not old, but you know, yeah, we're 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 older, you know, where we're just like, yeah, it would just be, it would just be bad. I think that's it, right? I don't, I don't even know what else to talk about. Yeah, I think, I think we're all caught up. I think we're just rambling now at this point. Once we know it's time to wrap it up, when it's time, when we've been rambling. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. You know, you can check all our stuff out at TNT on the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. 
uh, YouTube, all of it, and this will be put up as like a YouTube video. Now, now in the last one, I did add video and pictures from the Vegas trip, but there's no video footage for this one, I don't think. Is there anything? No, well, I guess you took stuff at the concert, but I didn't at all. Yeah, I could, I could put that, I could put that stuff in there, but I'll take, I'm gonna take out this. I mean, I take out the sound because to me it just doesn't make sense, you know. Like, why right. are we gonna have that audio over uh, our audio or have both at the same time? It just seems weird. Um, but I'll, I'll, I might put those pictures. I might put that stuff up on the, uh, on the, uh, not the Facebook. Um, well, maybe on the Facebook too, but uh, on the what you call it on on the website. Because I did that too, as I posted the pictures to the website. I didn't post the videos because I don't. I don't think I can post the videos to the website, actually. They, like, take up too much space or something, but I can post the pictures of the, of the, what I'm going to say. Uh, and my theory, I forgot about this, is that my theory is that because this self-titled album is Dan plus Shay, that the next one is going to be Equal Sign Deshan is the name of the next album. So. <laughs> we'll see. Yes, we will. There's going to be a lot of people owing me money if I'm right. No. So, yeah. So, that's where you can check out all our stuff. Like I said, you can check it out on YouTube or on, on the website or on iTunes. All those, all the podcast sites, I guess. Hopefully, if not, then tell us and we'll try to figure it out or not. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, well, we're everywhere, dude. It's, it's crazy. So, yeah. Get up on these nets.